What is up, ladies and germs? My name is Will from Ghost Hack, and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to create your own wavetables inside of Vital. Now, Vital has been the talk of the town recently amongst sound designers and a lot of uh, bass music producers. And honestly, I, I see why. It's pretty good. But I'm going to talk about its wavetables today and I'm going to show you how you can make your own wavetables both inside of Vital and from importing other things into Vital. And I'm also going to show you how you can edit them a little bit. So here we are in Vital and obviously I'm sure you all know how to get to these uh, these different wavetables. And you may be familiar about how to create your own wavetables in Serum. We've done videos about that in the past. But uh, the way to make wavetables in Vital is actually very similar. There's just a few different ways to get at it. So the first way, would be pretty similar to Serum, meaning that you would import an audio file. So let's say I have a sample here that I want to make a wavetable out of. You throw on headphones. What you do is you'd find the sample you want to make a wavetable out of. I have this one right here, which is just a weird uh, glitched out percussion from Unique Drums Volume 2 from Ghost Hack. But I can drag this right on top of here. And I have a few different options. Now, Serum has more options, but these options, in my opinion, are pretty good. It starts out with just normal wavetable mode. And then uh, you can see if I uh, switch to 3D view, how it's chosen to use this sample to create a table. And I think this does a pretty good job most of the time. And then uh, we can drag it on to a different one, which is vocode. Which sometimes this works better than others. Here might be a better example of this one that I can drag right onto vocode and it creates this table. These tables tend to be a little bit smoother, a little less gritty, and they have um, they have more focus on the formant action of the sound itself. And then you have pitch splice, which it's very common for these to be a little messier. So this is for this is good if you're importing something that has tonality. For example, this doesn't have tonality, so it created this mess. However, this bass sound right here does have a pitch. So if you throw it into pitch slice, it does a much better job. Now, but let's say you have your table right here and you can see the main problem with this table, which is a problem that I come across when I'm like very, it's a very common problem to have when importing sounds as wavetables into Vital, is there's all this extra space back here. Like there's all this nothing that nobody wants in their life. And you don't just delete the frames the way that you would in Serum, you have to actually go into the editor and do some keyframe stuff. Now, real quick, let me explain to you just basically how these keyframes work. If you've ever used video editing software or like rendering software, then this might be a little more fam familiar to you, but it's not very common that this process crops up in DAWs. So basically, this is how this works. This is uh, your wavetable right here. You can hear if I'm scrolling through it, I can click uh, I can click the notes to hear the sound. And you have the beginning of your wavetable and the end of your wavetable. And you can see if I click this little node in the beginning, you can see this is position 0.0, .0 at the very beginning. And then if I click this node at the end, you can see this is position 25932, like at the very end of the file. Now the end doesn't sound like anything because there's a bunch of silence. You can see when I'm scrolling through it, there's nothing. And then only about right here does it, you know, begin to actually crop up. So what I want to do is I want to find the end of the wavetable. Let's say I want this frame right here to be the last frame of the wavetable and everything else right here, I just want gone. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go right here and double click to add another little node. And I can see this position right here. I can highlight it and I can copy it. So I've copied that position. And there may be an easier way to do this. This is just what I figured out myself. And then I can double click to get rid of this. And when I click on this node, I can now paste in control V this position right there. And now when I hit enter, I have now said that the last frame of this wavetable, the very last one is in that position that we just highlighted in the middle. So now this whole, uh, this whole wavetable is sort of condensed down into into what it needs to be. It's it's not there's there's no emptiness at the end here. <laughs> 
Again, easier ways to do this probably do exist. This is just the way that I've kind of figured out. So if you're at a loss, that's what I recommend. And of course, in here, you have a lot of other controls such as uh, the way the files blended together. Th these are like uh, warp modes, basically. You have file blend, which is uh, unique to unique to Vital. Uh, that's not in Serum. And you have the time mode, which I think is similar to Crossfade. At least Crossfade from Serum. And then you have the spectral mode, which is also in Serum. With this wavetable, it doesn't really matter as long as you select something other than none. Because it's very glitchy. So I just uh, stick with File Blend. I think File Blend's pretty good. I like it. And you have a couple different phase styles as well. Uh, Vocode tends to kind of uh, spread out the phases and round them out so they're not so sharp and piercing. You see, it's, it's much smoother. And then Clear does the opposite. It makes things sharper and tighter and crispier. And you can see the kind of things that it does to the phases. You know, this one's all messed up, while, whereas the clear one is very tight and uh, rigid. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about the modifiers before I go into actually how to create wavetables inside of Vital without importing other sounds. So about these modifiers is to each of these lanes, you see this is the audio file source that we have here. Uh, to each of these lanes, you can add modifiers and you have a few different options here. And I'm not gonna go over all of these, but I'm going to basically go over how, how to learn what these do and how to go through and figure out and mess around with them because it might be a little confusing at first. I'm gonna start with the basic one, which is a frequency filter, which this is just this is just a low pass filter. And you can see I've added that lane and I've created a node right at the beginning. So right at the beginning of the wavetable, let's say I want this wavetable as it goes through its table, I want it to slowly uh, get more muffled and I want a low pass to come in. So the very front of the wavetable is completely open and the very back of the wavetable is completely closed in a filter. Let's say I wanted to do that. I can do that with a frequency filter. So I can set the cutoff here to all the way up just 10 and then I can double click at the end here to add a new node, let me just drag this over here, and I can set the cutoff all the way down to zero. And then I can also change the shape. The shape is basically, it's, it's like kind of like the resonance of the filter that we're using here. So now I have a keyframe at the end and a keyframe at the beginning. And what Vital is gonna do is it's gonna slowly go from this keyframe to that one and just blend it in. So uh, the low pass filter is slowly going to be creeping in. Yeah, you can see it's slowly going down like that until it reaches the very end where it's at uh, nothing. And that's our wavetable. If we go back, you can see that we've done this to the wavetable. And you can see we've put the resonance really tight. Like if we wanted to uh, raise up the resonance to be something a little bit different, then we could just uh, maybe raise it all the way up so it's really subtle. But that's how these keyframes work. So anything that you're changing here, you're changing over time, you know, when it comes to this filter. And these little nodes represent points of change in, uh, in the values that you set. So let's say I wanted to remove this one and I wanted to add something else. I can add something like a wave folder is really cool. So it starts out the wave folder, there's only one, uh, there's only one value you can change here. So we're gonna start at nothing and I want the wave to fold in on itself all the way through this table. So I'm going to add another node. Again, you can make, you can add this anywhere. You can say it goes up here, it goes down here, but I just wanna add this node at the end and change the multiply all the way up just so we can really get a full wave warping sensation. That's brutal. Maybe for these purposes, we can bring down the multiply a little bit. To something a little more like that but let's say we wanted it to uh, be really high in the middle and then in the end we wanted it to go down again we can add another node down at the end and then change this yeah there we go Woo. oh yeah this one's 26 we have to bring this down there we go you can think of these kind of like automation clips. The only difference is you just don't see the line. Like these are the points in the automation clips that we're making, but you just can't see the line traveling up and down. That's the only difference here. Let's say I really love this wavetable. It's really harsh and brutal. 
So I can right click and hit save to wavetables. Then you can put yourself as the author and then you save it. And then you should be able to pull it up in a different uh, filter if you wanted to. You can go user and there's the wavetable. And you can see when it loaded this wavetable, if you click here, it saved the thing that, the things that you did. You know what I'm saying? Like there's the wave folder. All of what you did is still there. So I can change this. It's like, oh wow, this wavetable was really great, but I really wish that this was just a little bit lower and I could do that. Well, I can go and change it. So all of that is well and good, but how do you create a wavetable just inside of Vital itself without importing other audio files? Well, this is how you do it. Let's say you created a sound in Vital that you liked and you wanted to have as a wavetable. Like, uh, let, let me just take a preset that I made. Here's a nice little growl preset. <laughs> Let's say I want to make this a wavetable. Well, first of all, what I want to do is I'm actually going to make sure that all of these pitches are on zero. It is a lot harder to do this if the pitches aren't on zero, it can still be done, but I like to make sure they're on zero and then just play it low on my keyboard. <laughs> And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the length of the thing that I'm about to record to make a table is two bars long. So I can change this frequency here. I'm actually going to change this frequency to one bar because I want it to repeat twice. It sounds really juicy and muddy this way, but basically I have some pitch automation that I want to take off. Don't be, don't be modulating the pitch when you're uh, making it a wavetable. makes it a lot harder on yourself. And then this LFO, which should also be changed to one over one. Great. So two of those hits are going to be put into one wavetable. So now I can flip on oscillator three. I can bring down the level so you don't hear the saw wave. And now I do this. I right click here and say resynthesize preset to wavetable. And then it does its thing. Let me go ahead and flip off the other oscillators real quick, as well as the effects. We don't really need those. Let me reset this level. And now we have our wavetable. But what happened for whatever reason, whether that be uh, the BPM that I'm at or any other settings that I have in Vital, is there's this little thing at the end here that I don't want. We have the two main hits. And then at the end, how do you trim that out? Well, you can trim that out exactly how I told you before. All you have to do is find the end of the wavetable right there. And then we can double click to create a node. We can see where this is at. So let's copy this value right here. I can double click to get rid of it, go into this last node, and then we can paste this value in the position. Then we hit enter. And now we have trimmed down our wavetable. That's what I wanted. And then you can edit it all the ways that I showed you before. And I mean, if we're being perfectly honest, you don't even have to create a whole big preset in order to make a wavetable that's interesting. Like if I uh, initialize this preset and let's say I just take a saw wave and I throw a cool warp mode on it. Like uh, maybe I want random amplitudes. <laughs> Maybe I think that's dope. I mean, I, I do kind of think that's dope. All I have to do is make sure that it's playing over the course of two bars. So I can uh, drag this up just with LFO one. Again, this may be based on the BPM that I'm currently at. I'm just at 140 BPM. I'm sure that plenty of people are in working in and around that range. And now what I can do, I don't, I don't even need oscillator two. I can just go resynthesize preset to wavetable right here and then it loads it right in. I can make sure this random amplitude is off, but now we can listen to our wavetable. Like that's awesome. And you, you can even do this again. I have form and scale up here. I'm now controlling uh, the way the wavetable position is moving. I can make that a wavetable. I can just right click and then resynthesize preset to wavetable once again. And then I can make sure this is off. That's a lot of cool. And of course we can go ahead and save this as well. Don't forget to tell Vital that it is you and then you are set. I even decided to throw together a little preset using that wavetable. And then uh, with some effects, I can throw on my thick rack. 
Love this synth. So there you go, lads and lasses. There are a couple of easy ways to make wavetables and edit them inside of Vital. If you want these tables that I created today, you can download them in the description below. And yeah, I'll, I'll also throw in this preset that I made just now. Also, the tutorial for the thick rack that I use can be found in the description as well. So if you like this video and you want to see more Vital content in the future, go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know down in the comments below the kind of things that you would like me to do with this synth. I love experimenting with it, especially when it comes to basses. That's my bias. It's very versatile. It has a lot of cool effects and I'm really excited to see the kind of things that people are using it for. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing.